Hello and welcome to downtown. I'm your host, Robbie Haig. Thank you for being here with us once again. Today, I am speaking with Rita Wallstadt, who is from the Council on Aging here in, in Sandwich. And she is an outreach coordinator. And we will let people know what it is to be an outreach coordinator. Welcome to the show, Rita. Thank you. Good morning, Robbie. Good morning. And uh, as, well, I know the uh, Council on Aging does so many different things in town. Um, so would you like to talk about a list of services that? Yes. Um, a lot of people used to think that uh, Council on Aging is just where old people come to events or have lunch, and it's not that not the case anymore. We have no old people in no. the council. <laughs> well, there are some, but, yeah, but, but they're all very yeah. active, yes. you know. Um, yeah. So we have uh, a majority, uh, I mean, a, a, a variety of um, fitness programs and things like that. Uh, but the outreach program is very, um, very busy, and I've been there, um, I'm on my eighth year now, and oh. it's, it's become even more so. I do have uh, office appointments on Mondays and Fridays to, to help people apply for different government programs like uh, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, Fuel Assistance, and um, some people come in to apply for Mass Health and have questions. And so I make myself available in the office on Mondays and Fridays. And then uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I uh, am also in the office, but I try to schedule home visits on those days. We have different issues that come up with clients. Sometimes there are referrals made by doctor's offices, families, neighbors, different departments in the town. Um, or we just get a call from someone who wants some information. So I will make a, a home visit to go assess at the situation, find out what it is that that individual might need, um, and then try to hook them up with the different services that we either provide in the town or other resources that are available in the community or on the Cape. Uh, there are times when I find that there may be a, a clinical need or a medication issue, and I will have the public health nurse, Joanne Gay, come out with me. And there's also been times when I've brought Brian Von Derrick, the community services officer, with me, because sometimes it's helpful to have a man in uniform with me. Mm. And the gentlemen seem to relate to him very well, especially if they are veterans, because he's also a veteran. Oh, very good. Right. So um, that is... Um, what I, I stay busy with, the home visits and the office visits, but um, they also, I get referrals from the fire department if someone has taken a fall, and they'll call me to say that this person is coming in to see you because they may need some assistance because they're falling, and it, it could be a medication issue, or it could be mm -hmm. just that they have some safety issues in the home. And um, It's the, so wonderful that it's a community-oriented uh, program. Oh, definitely. Um, we work closely with the fire, police, public Very health, good. nursing, and um, other departments get involved too. Um, if they have a concern about someone out there that's come sure. in, even the assessing department has called to say, Mrs. So-and-so might need some help, can you give her a call? So I'll follow up on those calls and see what the issues are in the home. And families from out of state, even out of the country, we've had wow. families from Russia that we've communicated with, right Australia. On that are concerned with their, their you know, senior um, or their aging parents. And so um, we respond, you know, to the aging parent and then get back to the family wherever they're located to let them know what, what the situation might be or how we've been able to help them. So um, we are really, truly uh, an aging population. Very much so. And life is not as simple as it once was. No, and I'm finding that to be true too because I'm a senior myself. <laughs> so, and um, of course, seniors used to be centered around home. Not right. so. Not right. so. I Homes do, have spread out quite a bit. Yes, you know. and you know, I have found that in making some, some of these visits, I've found that um, a lot of the seniors or the elderly that live alone are very lonely and just need someone to talk to. And right. we do have a friendly visitor program that our volunteer coordinator matches volunteers to go out and visit these people once a week. Oh, how and nice. It is very nice, and um, it works very nicely for um, the families that are out of town because then they're in, 
know that someone's checking in on their adult parent. Sure. And then I follow up with home visits as well to see if um, the services are working for them, if there's anything else they might need. And I find that a lot of times um, I form a relationship with an elder and they'll call me maybe once a week or once a month or they may come in just to see me and it may how be, nice may just be to say hello and see how I'm doing very I, good it is it's very nice um, getting back to the fire department when they do take a fall or something like that the fire department um, installs what they call a Knox box I have the information in my office and it can be ordered online or um, you can call the 800 number and they can order that. And it's actually, it's a device where you can put an extra home um, key and they uh, install oh. the outside of the house or um, the door with a spare key. So if they do take a fall and they call 911 um, and an emergency has to respond, they don't have to break down, uh, break or a window one, or a door. They have access idea. to the home. Mm, so very good. that's very popular um, with the seniors. Um, we have a lot of housing issues that come up. Seniors come in and say, I, I'm being evicted, or I can't afford my mortgage, or who can I apply to, because they don't want to leave town if they have to sell their home or leave their home. Sure. So I help them with housing applications to um, places here in town, and then also there's a universal application that covers all of the state and they can do that online or I can help them with that. Um, there's really um, a need for housing. And it's not just the over 60 population. It's younger families that come in to see me too. Sure. And they need help as well. But housing has uh, become a real crisis in town. Yeah. We in the past talked about people living in their cars with children. And I know. Yeah, it's and, and I've heard that even in the last couple of years, there was someone living in the forest in their car, and they ended up going to the shelter in Hyannis because you know um, they, they knew enough to call the police, and the police called us, and between the two of us, we got them to the shelter. And I understand that this one particular woman that, we're speaking, that I'm speaking of is, is now in housing. Oh, very so, good. So, um, yeah, we all work together. It's not just, um, it's the town of Sandwich, it's the county of Barnstable, um, there's a lot of resources out there, and um, we just want to share that with everyone that's out there to help them with whatever need needs right. uh, they need attention with. You and know. needs are many and varied. Yes, yes, yeah, they really it's not are. Just, it's not just lack of money. No, yeah. no, that's true. And um, we have a supplemental assistance program at the Council on Aging. Um, we have some funding, and if someone comes in and says that they um, they have a utility bill they can't afford to pay, okay. um, I do refer out to St. Vincent de Paul, the Cape Cod Needy Fund, uh, Salvation Army, but we also do have some funding, and we'll try to find uh, help uh, between all the organizations to help somebody pay down a utility. or. Um, you know, maybe get some emergency shopping done, sure. grocery shopping. Uh, transportation to medical appointments is huge, and a lot of times when I make a home visit, the senior doesn't know we provide that transportation Monday through Friday for a, a, a small donation. So that's a very busy service that we offer wow. at the council. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard just this morning on the early news that the SNAP program is in jeopardy. Well, you know, I haven't heard that, um, but I know that there are a lot of people that rely on SNAP to help them get groceries, and I know that people who may have been receiving a set amount for SNAP, it's been cut down to a lower amount, and they call me, of course, to find out what it is. Right. I do refer them to the, the contact that I have, because um, I go to outreach meetings once a month, because there's an outreach coordinator in every town on the Cape. And we meet for meetings once a month to brainstorm, share stories, and, and resources. And a lot of them have a lot more information than I might have, or vice versa. Yeah. But um, Well, like I say, this was just this morning, right. so it's brand new. I'll have to check and, in on that. And it, it seems that the, uh, there are so many people out there who are working that they, they don't feel that uh, the SNAP program is all that effective. I'm sure people will beat it down and make it right and right. you know. And as they said on this program, on the news, was that not every community is the same. Not every community has 
jobs for people to even work part time. That's true. I, I get seniors coming in to see me, asking me if they if I know of any jobs out there. Um, we do have an ongoing list of, <coughs> excuse me, people that do private duty care that are looking for help, and I have them come in and talk to me because my background is home care, and I've done Very a lot good. of private duty myself in the past, mm -hmm. and so I try to help them, you know, um, put something together and refer them to different organizations that might be looking for private duty or or families. Sometimes sure. I have families call me, especially in the summer, and they're coming with their elderly parents looking for private duty. So. Um, yeah, there is a big need, and yeah. uh, I have a success story with one gentleman who came to see me last year. He um, he didn't have a job. He was working part time delivering um, materials and lost his job. Had to apply for fuel assistance and SNAP and everything. And he said it took me a long time to come in here to apply for this. And I said, well, don't give up. You know, keep looking for the jobs. Look on the websites. Go on all the town websites. And he did find a job, and he was so grateful. Wow. I've got the nicest email and a thank you card from him because he said if it wasn't for these services yeah. that he used temporarily, he would have never made it and found the job on, online. How, so, how wonderful yes. that is. Sure, and just the encouragement that you give to these people. Well, you having know, been there it, myself, okay. when I was a single parent, I learned about the services and what they can do for you. and. And that's how I got through school, through a grant, and so I encourage younger right. mothers to do the same. Wonderful. The same. Yeah. So and there are so many people who don't like to reach out, don't like to say they need help, and you know, we, like you say, we all do at some point in time. That's right. And um, uh, when I tell them about the food pantries that are available, they say, I can't bring myself to go in there. And I said, listen. I was at a point myself one time where I had to do that, and I sat in my car for almost 30 minutes, but I knew I needed to do that for me and my children. Right. And um, I said it was the best thing I ever did. They were so helpful, so kind, yes. and uh, it's temporary. And it's there for a reason. Absolutely. It's not something someone conjured up. That's right. You know, There's a lot of donations that come in for the community, right. and that's, that's why you go there to partake right. of that stuff. Yeah. Know? The, um, something that I have uh, been doing lately, and I've wanted to do for a long time, but you know, we hesitate to um, get involved with things that we know nothing about, and it's the uh, luncheon meals for the homeless. Meals on wheels. No. Is that no? Meals on wheels, no, delivered. is no, delivered to the people, but right. this is, uh, churches in the area have a meal. First church does a that. A day, yes. yeah. Yes. So that there are churches, there are people who can have a hot meal a day mm -hmm. uh, at any one of these churches. I think that's it's absolutely fabulous. wonderful. And hopefully when we get into our new building, so excited about that, that we'll be able to have some meals there as Excellent. well. Excellent. Yes. Right. Yes. It's important that the seniors, especially who don't really take care of themselves as well as they could mm -hmm. or should, mm -hmm. um, get a nutritious meal and have someone checking in on them to make sure that they're drinking enough because so many of them end up in the hospital because of dehydration. Sure. So, yeah. Yes. So, tell me about the new building. What's happening with that? Well, I don't really know all that much about it, other than we have the the drawing in our um, in our uh, big room at at work now, and so it's in the planning stages. It is. We can see what it's going to look like on the outside, and it's nice to walk by it and smile every time we go by because we know it's in the works and it's coming. Nice. Um, it will be over there at the same um, location as the of the emergency management, police and fire, and and the skate park and. Um, I'm not sure when they're breaking ground. I'm not sure of any of the details. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's an, uh, an architect still to, um, to get into place, but um, it's very exciting because we, we do need the space, and um, I think there'll be a lot of new programs and activities that we'll be able to have because we'll have the space to do it sure. instead of trying to schedule who's going to use what room at what time. Like we do and now. I've been to your existing building, and 
I know there's not a great deal of space there. No, there isn't. But it, and it's also nice to just have people thinking about what's coming. That's right. You know, we don't need to have the answers. No. Yeah. Just, it's very good to talk about it. Yes, yes, we're excited about that. That is very good. And, and I have to uh, give kudos to our, our um, new director, Susan Morancic. She's very, um, very positive and for, she's a forward thinker and, and um, she's, she's terrific. I'm really glad she's on board. We, we're, we're very fortunate to have someone like that at the helm. Very good. Yeah. I have met her and I agree with you. She's, she's progressive for sure. Right. Yeah. So, um, inter you have a crisis intervention team also? Yes. Actually, um, Brian Bonderick, the um, community services officer from the police department, and I took a um, mental health first aid um, certification course, instructor's course, a couple of years ago, and um, we realized there's an increase in mental health issues out there in the community. And so he wanted to formulate a team here in town. So we meet the first Monday of every month at the police department and the Council on Aging, Susan and I go, and um, Joanne from Public Health Nursing. We have Jackie Lane from NAMI who goes. We have a representative from Bay Cove, Gosnell Fire Department. And so we all meet together to talk about certain cases in town that um, have involved a lot of different departments and a lot of different people to try to brainstorm what we can do to help these individuals um, get to a place of, um, of peace and maybe some resolve. So um, there's a lot of issues and yeah. I find um, in personal experiences as well as out there in the community, um, there's a lot of people that need help and need some direction and don't know where to turn. So um, that is a really good thing that we meet um, every, every month because um, sometimes Brian has information that's so positive because like I said, there are success stories and, and it's good to hear the outcome of everybody working together as a team. Sure, right? very good. And of course, we, we know that uh, things that do continue that we've heard about before, elder abuse. Yes. We have to be uh, very much on top of that. Right. So. There's elder abuse, there's self-neglect, um, there's neglect from family members, abuse from family members, and um, that really hits home with me. I, um, I like to advocate for the seniors and, and try to help them as much as, what well, we all do as much as we can when there's a crisis situation, but um, there's protective services through um, elder affairs. and. We are mandated reporters from the Council on Aging, Nursing, Fire and Police, of course. And mm -hmm. we do find that sometimes we are working on a case together and we have to file multiple times to get some um, resolve to some of the situations that are um, out there in the community. It's, it's very sad, but it's also good to know that there is you know, a place to go where you can get help to, to um, get some answers. And once again, you have so many people working together that makes it, I'm sure, a great deal easier to accomplish than if there were one person. That's right, that's right. We, we support each other, we check in with each other, and um, we keep each other informed of the status of the clients or the citizens in the community, and um, it's, it's great to have that team, and it's great to, to know that I'm in touch with uh, elder services, uh, case managers, and, and trying to help um, you know, work, work together to, to better the services for mm -hmm. the, the elders out there. It's bad enough that these things are happening, but uh, knowing about them is a step ahead. Right, Yeah. absolutely. Very good. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to uh, speak on? Because we have, uh, I've talked with uh, Susan and we have decided that we're, we, the uh, TV, uh, uh, Sandra's TV, mm -hmm. and the Council on Aging are going to be working hand in hand as much as we possibly can. Um, this is what we set out to do a few years back, and it's so good that it's actually happening now. Right. That we right. are in communication with each other and will be more often for right. need. Um, there is one thing. Um, we have a, a, a temporary caregiver respite grant, 
and we um, it's actually through the uh, Sandwich Foundation and it was five hundred dollars up until this past year and they increased it um, to seven fifty uh -huh. and with that um, and it's amazing because the grant comes in and not soon after the grant comes in there's a client or a family member who needs some respite because they're the sole caregiver for an elder and they're getting burnt out. So wow. we contract with a local um, home care agency to bring in some respite so that caregiver can get a break. Um, we've had caregivers who've had to have surgery themselves, so we've brought in the help through an agency so they can recoup and not have to worry about their loved one. Also, we had another case where um, the caregiver had to, to leave the state to go take care of her elder mother, but she was taking care of an elder neighbor. So we brought in, through the grant, we brought in some help to, um, to alleviate that issue so she could leave and take care of her mother out of state and know that this elder person in the neighborhood was being well looked after. So that's a grant that Susan and I are trying to um, grow. We'd like to see more respite available to the community. Very good. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to, as a caregiver to um, relinquish that control, so to speak, but to, and to, to know that there is qualified professionals and paraprofessionals right. that can come in and help. Right. Well, there, there's just so much that needs uh, attention. Yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, and, of course, there are more and more elders needing help, and uh, we certainly are living longer, are we not? Yes, and, and also, I think, uh, healthier. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. People are more aware of their diet, their, their um, activities, and know what they have to do to extend their life, I think. Right. So it's yeah. a good thing. And you have um, a list of services provided by retirees in town. I'd like to hear a little bit about that. We do. Um, it's, some of them are retirees and some of them um, are uh, professionals who are still working out there, but um, we have seniors that can't afford to pay uh, someone their um, normal rate for hourly rate, and yet they need to have something done, whether it's electrical work, plumbing work, uh, maybe a little carpentry work, or, or, or even gardening. Um, we have some ladies on that list. Um, and gentlemen, and, and they're willing to go out to the seniors' homes at a discounted rate um, and help them get their um, task completed. And um, they don't, seniors don't trust people easily, and right. I can understand why. Yes. And um, so they call us to ask us if we have someone who can come and help them maybe um, fix the faucet or, or take the air conditioner out of the window or some things sure. like that. So we do have some people that are um, very qualified and, and very generous in going out to help the seniors. So um, we had a, a, a elderly woman who needed some uh, painting done on her garage and she said, I can't get up on the ladder anymore. And I said, well, at 85, I wouldn't <laughs> think so. So we did connect her with someone and this person ended up not just painting the garage but also putting in a stone walkway and helping her put in a wow. garden they became very good friends that's so wonderful yes yes and to be able to keep them in their own home is that's the goal oh wow it safely is goal. safely and i You're tell right. them that when i go out the goal for us to be here isn't to get you out of your home into another facility it's to keep you in your home safe Yes. So yeah. that's our, our goal. Mm -hmm. Because there are just not enough places out there for them to. It would be wonderful if we could all uh, be together with uh, five or six or seven elders and just enjoy the end of life, but it's not, life is not that simple. No, but you know, there is a congregate um, home here in town at Tom's oh, Way, and there's really? seven residents that live there, and they share the living space, and they seem to enjoy each other's company, and they do come up to different activities at the council. Wonderful. And I think more of that would be great. Wouldn't that be something? Because then because you're not alone. Uh, loneliness is a number one on the list for seniors. Right. And you can understand why. Yes. Even trying to stay alone in the home. Right. It's lonely. And isolation can cause the anxiety and depression, and that can just spiral downward. So right. that's something we try to keep an eye on. Yeah. 
And once again, it does take a community, doesn't it? It sure does. It yeah. sure does. Yeah. And the, the being in tune with what is happening in the community is uh, a lot, but right. so very necessary. Yeah. You know, I, I started as a 13-year-old cleaning houses for elderly, and it didn't take me long to fall in love with that population. Yes. They love to share memories, love to share stories, and, um, and I think people need to listen to them. Right. You can learn a lot from their experiences Absolutely. and their wisdom. And um, so I've, I've been an addicted to seniors for a long time. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Rita. And I, there's just so much out there. There's so much more that we need to talk about. We need to be in tune with each other right. more than we have in the past. And I look forward to that. Yes, I do too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, things can only get better, can't they? I hope so. If we keep talking and working towards it. That's right. Well, it's just wonderful that we have you out there doing what you're doing. Thank you. I love my job. <laughs> Even better. Yes. Yeah. If you love your job, everybody will see it. That's fantastic. So um, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for And I look forward to more working with other members of the other employees of the Council on Aging and uh, we'll just keep doing what we can do. That's right. Making it better. That's right. Thank you. And thank you out there for being part of downtown and watching and we couldn't do it without you. And uh, visit your Council on Aging. Get to know what's going on out there because uh, I truly believe there are more younger seniors at the Council on Aging than you would ever imagine. That's true. We are doing better with our age. We are. Thank you again so much. This is your host, Robbie Haig, for Downtown. <laughs>